game number one is getting underway right now with Super JJ and Purple. Guys, get hyped because these two guys, you're watching two great minds at work at this match. You would be lucky to have me on your team. <laughs> I have to wake up and see you every day anyway. And right away, we're going to see something a little out of the normal here. Yep, not really uh, too unexpected for this, but, you know, already Super JJ, I feel like getting the better of this one. We've seen players, you know, Shaman hasn't been doing too well. And I think the one spot where it really fits is against Druid decks. Yeah, and it looks like he might have sniped Purple here. You know, Purple trying to get the better of him, probably thought he could queue up Druid and get a little bit of an advantage here in game one. Now, what's interesting to me is that Super JJ, I mean, this is clearly sort of an aggressive Shaman deck and kind of with a little bit of a mech theme. He's got Spider Tank and Feral Spirit in here. Yeah, I don't normally see those cards in conjunction with each other. Yeah, I, that's why I'm so surprised by this. And I actually like that Super JJ isn't coining out the Whirling Zapomatic here. Um, you know, if, he, if Purple fails to have a Wild Growth in this spot, Whirling Zapomatic on turn two can suddenly stop him from playing a Shade. And he might not even necessarily play it. I mean, the fact that his curve is so strong with Spider Tank into Spider Tank, that could influence things. But, you know, saving the coin for some bigger turns, you know, maybe getting a turn four Lothab could be a big deal. Yeah, I just want to say, it does make his curve a lot better. Turn two Zapomatic, turn three Spider Tank, turn four Lothab. That's pretty good. Yeah, and this is the spot that Super JJ was looking for. If Purple has to Wrath on turn two, I'm sorry, on turn three, it means he can't play Shade and Xramas. Leroy Jenkins finds its way into Super JJ's hand. This deck is aggressive. Well, I mean, we know exactly what his game plan is. It's just straight up getcha. Yeah, this deck is angry. It wants to, <laughs> it, it wants to get it's you. It's just mad. Yeah, it's just, it's just really mad. Shade and Xramas is going to help contest these uh, Feral Spirits, but in the meantime, Super JJ is going to be getting a lot of damage output. And this is what a perfect plan he's had this game too. You know, play this Feral Spirit, save the coins, so that way on turn four I can still get my Spider Tank out. Yeah, picks up this Rock Fighter weapon a little late. You know, his Whirling Zapomatic didn't live, didn't, doesn't get to do the dream that we saw Purple do <laughs> with his Whirling Zapomatic. The double, the double Rock Fighter dream. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a lot of damage, Nathan. Yeah, curious if Purple's actually going to unveil the shade here. I would suspect not because it's based on a Spider Tank. But he's actually gonna just gonna start getting a little bit aggressive with it, and I can't blame him for that either. You know, if Super JJ wants to run the Spider Tank into the shade, totally fine with him. Yeah, I think he'd be totally fine with that. But you can't just let these Feral Spirits sit around. You're getting a little too much value to Super JJ. He gets to attack and leaving them on board. He has to get through them eventually. And his hand, you know, he's gonna be able to fight here later in the game. He just needs to alleviate some of the pressure on the board. Just what a turn from Super JJ too. I mean, you have Lothab possibilities, you have Doomhammer, you can play Mech Warper, Spider Tank, and Rock Fighter Weapon, just all the possibilities in the world. I like the Doomhammer here. It's uh, very aggressive. You start to get to push in a ton of damage here. Plus, I mean, this isn't the best Lothab turn in the world. Yeah, the, another bigger factor here too is that this is the one turn that he's risking a Harrison Jones. If he plays this later on in the game when it's kind of been a little bit more of a grind battle, uh, if Purple lands a safer Harrison Jones where, you know, he's committing a 5-4 to a board in a spot where he's able to commit one safely, that's a much bigger swing in the game than, than it would have been right here. That's always, you know, you have to hold your breath when you play this, uh, this weapon here because if you get this Harrison Jones, it is so bad for you. Yeah, and this is another spot where I think that Super JJ is just going to evaluate this situation and count up his damage and go, you know what, I think I could just get him. I mean, yeah, he can do 13 this turn if he wants to with a Rock Fighter weapon and develop a Mech Warper. He's got a lot of options here. He can go Spider Tank Mech Warper. He's even got Leroy to back this up if he wants to get really aggressive. Yeah, I mean, Spider Tank's for sure coming down here. Uh, he's going to pick off the shade, and then the big decision for him is whether or not he trades Spider Tank and five more health for the Emperor or whether or not he's just going to start pushing. And I think with Lothab and Leroy in his hand, that the push is totally fine. Yeah, the fact that he has Leroy and Rockbiter in his hand, I fully expect to push for damage here this turn, but Super JJ could have a different idea. Uh, I'm actually looking at trading the Spider Tank in this spot. That's really interesting to me. If he's trading the Spider Tank here, is he just Rockbitering? Yeah, yeah, he's just going to take out the Emperor. Yeah, he has to be. Which is, I mean, this play doesn't feel very good for him, honestly. Like, obviously, it's a big swing in the board and he gets a lot of damage in, but not able to play the Spider Tank on the same turn you play a Mech Warper, like maybe he should have just played the Spider Tank instead. Also, let me, let me count this up. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. Yeah, it's only 15 damage next turn with the Leroy Genius too, so it's not even like he's, you know, threatening lethal here. Yeah, I, this is, um, you know, maybe not the best played turn he could have had, but he's still so far ahead. It's like, it's, I mean, this is the nature of this matchup and why he queued up this deck. You just beat him up. Yeah, well, Purple's starting to get a little bit back in the board here. Yeah, the Druid of the Claw and the Ancient of War uh, both being able to uh, keep some heavy pressure out. But, I mean, Lothab's Spider Tank here, what a big turn. Put eight power on the board. Yeah, and he's going to get in a ton of damage here. He's going to make Purple have to uh, interact with his entire board here, take care of everything. Yeah, if Purple can't actually pad his life total or taunt up here, 
he's dead, and I don't think he realizes that. He's like, it's pretty hard to put your opponent on Leroy Jenkins. I was about to say, I, I've been killing a lot of people with Leroy Jenkins lately on, uh, on ladder, <laughs> and I love the reactions you get from it. Yeah, these Boombots are going to have to do some major work here. First one, Ooh. not good enough. The second one for four could be it. Ooh, yeah. Only the three here, though. Yeah, but this is actually still pretty darn good for him. I mean, Druid of the Claw, then Keeper to finish this off. Yeah, it's still a pretty decent turn here. He's going to Druid of the Claw, get defensive here, and then Keeper to, you know, do two damage to the Spider Tank and finish it off here. But uh, there's no way he just Ancient of Lores here, right? Um, I, I don't think so. I think that you actually, you have to kill the Spider Tank. You can't afford to pay life anymore. And you have to be defensive at some point. Uh, but he's thinking about it. Yeah, we see Purple take some risks sometimes. You know, if he heals and then uses his life total, that's not that big a deal. And obviously, he's not drawing cards because his hand's already so massive. So, going to drop to uh, to 13 here, which is just out of range. But Super JJ only needs three more points of damage. Yeah. Crackle's going to kill him. Rockbiter's going to kill him. Uh, I mean, just just look at look at everything that could happen here. Picks up a second Fire Guard Destroyer. He's a little bit off. Yeah, Lightning Bolt would have done it as well. There's There was a lot of outs for him to actually have enough for lethal there. Again, Purple not, you know, doesn't know the Leroy Jenkins is there. Yeah, and Super JJ, he's clearly now at this point very worried about Force Nature or just even Savage Roar at this point. I mean, Purple's got 12 points of damage sitting on board. You can't be comfortable. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a couple cards. Uh, to, yeah, he, he can actually do lethal here, right? With He 11. could have been able to do lethal yeah. with Force of Nature and Drew that, of the That's Claw. it. I mean, Drew of the Claw, Force of Nature is going to yep. be more than enough damage. Purple able to hold off just long enough and pick up this win. And I wonder if this is anything to do with the way that uh, maybe Super JJ just didn't push for damage here. You know, fought really defensively for the board in a situation where it looked like he could just continue to push. I mean, Purple's trading the whole time. You have minions to back it up. Yeah, he also took a lot of damage when he was fighting for the board, you know, attacking that yeah. Emperor and taking five that turn instead of just, get, you know, dealing 10 to Purple. It's it's hard to leave an Emperor on board, though. I can't blame anyone for killing an Emperor, frankly. But, you know, sometimes you have to look at your board state and figure out, can I win if I kill this Emperor?